Japanese leaders have approved a 10-year business plan for the operator of the damaged nuclear plant in Fukushima. Executives at Tokyo Electric Power Company are facing a costly decommissioning process at the facility, and they're counting on restarting reactors elsewhere to boost revenue. Industry Minister Toshimitsu Motegi officially told TEPCO President Naomi Hirose of the business plan's approval. The government has controlled the company since 2012. TEPCO officials want to restart reactors at their Kashiwazaki Kariwa plant in Niigata Prefecture as early as July. They also plan to rebuild aging thermal power plants and find cheaper imported fuel for thermal power generation. They're forecasting an annual profit of more than $950 million that would allow them to gradually lower electricity rates. TEPCO is looking at creating a new division to deal with the growing problem of contaminated water at Fukushima Daiichi and to dismantle reactors. It has set aside $19 billion for the work. <laughs> TEPCO should show the people and assure them that the company is changing and it will keep on changing. You should do this through your efforts and action. The government has increased the limit of its interest-free loans to TEPCO to $86 billion. The utility is using the money for decontamination efforts and to compensate evacuees. Company officials plan to streamline management and close local offices to cut costs by $46 billion. They want to make TEPCO competitive. TEPCO executives need to obtain consent from municipalities if they want to fire up their nuclear reactors. The governor of Niigata Prefecture criticized the utility's business plan. Hirohiko Izumida says it seems like the plan will be impossible to implement. TEPCO hasn't learned from the Fukushima accident. It's not qualified to operate nuclear plants. Izumida says he plans to meet the president of TEPCO on Thursday to urge him to fully analyze what happened at Fukushima Daiichi. Some familiar faces on the Japanese political scene are gearing up for a fight to lead the country's capital. They're mapping out their campaigns for a Tokyo governor. The winner will replace Naoki Inose. He led the city's successful bid to host the 2020 Olympics, but he resigned last month over a funding scandal. One of the candidates is former Prime Minister Morihiro Hosokawa. He's getting support from another former prime minister, Junichiro Koizumi, one of Japan's most famous and influential political figures. They're joining forces to challenge the central government's pro-nuclear policy. NHK World's Yoshitaka Hirauchi reports. Two former prime ministers united by one cause. Junichiro Koizumi offered some star power to Morihiro Hosokawa, who launched his campaign to become Tokyo's next governor. Both men want to reduce Japan's reliance on nuclear energy to zero. I have a strong sense of crisis about various issues Japan now faces, nuclear energy in particular. I believe the survival of this country is at stake. Hosokawa is 76 and was prime minister in 1993. 
A financial scandal forced him to resign after nine months. He's running as an independent. But leaders of the main opposition, Democratic Party, say they will support him. Koizumi says the race will affect national politics like never before. I think this election is a fight between the pro and anti nuclear energy camps. I believe Japan can develop without any nuclear power. Koizumi is widely considered Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's political mentor. Abe did not directly comment on his involvement in the race, but he noted. Tokyo residents are concerned about long waiting lists for daycares and elderly care, not just energy. I expect various and well-balanced issues will be discussed in the campaign, and I hope the election will be fruitful for the citizens of Tokyo. Hosokawa's main competitor would agree. Yoichi Masuzoe is 65. And a former health minister with the Liberal Democratic Party. I think we can do everything we can to revitalize Tokyo ahead of the 2020 Olympics. Masuzoe is pledging to focus on improving services for elderly residents. He promised to increase renewable energy resources so Japan could gradually end its reliance on nuclear power. He was an LDP lawmaker but left the party in 2010. Still, he likely be able to count on the support of the ruling LDP and its coalition partner, New Komeito. Seven other candidates are expected to run for Tokyo governor. The race starts next week. Voters go to the polls February 9th. The leader they elect will help the city prepare for the summer games. But the next governor could also have an impact on Japan's ongoing energy policy debate. Yoshitaka Hirauchi, NHK World, Tokyo. An affiliate of TEPCO has applied for safety screening of an intermediate nuclear waste dump ahead of its planned start of operations next year. The recyclable fuel storage company has asked the Nuclear Regulation Authority for official screening of its facility. The company is 80% owned by TEPCO. The firm has been building the facility in the city of Mutsu in the northern prefecture of Aomori. It plans to store a total of 3,000 tons of nuclear waste from TEPCO and other operators for up to 50 years. Company officials say the facility proved safe when tested to new standards. The inspection involved earth tremors 30 percent stronger than initial simulations. The company hopes to start operating the facility in March next year. We've taken proactive measures looking far ahead. We want the nuclear regulator to conclude this facility is safe. One drawback is the facility's size. Its 3,000 ton capacity accounts for only a small portion of the 17,000 tons of waste that's being kept at nuclear plants across 
Japan. At many locations, storage pools holding spent fuel rods are nearly full. The accumulation of waste is being blamed on the trouble-plagued spent fuel reprocessing, uh, reprocessing plant in Rokasho village, also in Aomori. There seems to be no prospect of the plant ever functioning properly. Questions remain over what to do with Japan's nuclear waste. There are no plans at present to build more storage the Japanese facilities. Japanese government plans to create a large database from various sources, even from personal messages posted on social networks. This is to help public and private sectors better respond to natural disasters. The database will include GPS data on human and vehicle traffic, weather information, geological information on earthquakes and tsunamis, and posts from online social networking sites. Government officials will publish the collected data in an easy-to-use format. They expect the combined analysis of information to help guide residents to safe escape routes. They say such a database would also enable speedy rescue operations and efficient transportation of relief supplies. The government plans to make the database fully available in 2016 after reviewing its Farmers effectiveness. Farmers in Fukushima have had to get creative as they deal with the aftermath of the 2011 nuclear accident. They constantly test the produce they sell, but some consumers still worry about radiation contamination. So one village has found a way to grow vegetables in a closed environment. NHK World's Naomi Umemura shows us. Mitsuyo Endo and her family own a mushroom farm in the village of Kawauchi, 30 kilometers from Fukushima Daiichi. The 2011 nuclear accident forced them to change how they work. <laughs> now they test the mushrooms several times for radiation. Endo says the level of cesium or other substances is below the government set standard. Still, their mushrooms sell for nearly half of what they did before the disaster. My mushrooms are safe. It's a shame they're deemed no good the moment people find out they're from Fukushima. Other farmers in Kawauchi are dealing with the same problem. Growing crops such as mushrooms, rice, and buckwheat is easy. Selling them is another matter. Endo San Takeo leads the reconstruction effort for the village. He decided to take action. Kawauchi prides itself on having clean groundwater. I thought of growing safe, cesium-free vegetables by creating an enclosed space that uses tasty groundwater to cultivate vegetables, while taking extra care not to absorb any cesium floating around in the atmosphere. His colleagues at the village office liked the idea. They built a cutting-edge vegetable factory last April. The hydroponic facility uses water, but no soil. LED lights speed growth. The factory can produce up to 8,000 heads of lettuce at one time. Workers harvest every 30 to 40 days and check for radioactive substances before shipment. Since the vegetables are cultivated in a clean room, they don't have to be washed. The customer can simply open the container and pour dressing directly onto the vegetables. It's now our best seller. Consumers are buying the vegetables in stores across Fukushima Prefecture and in the Tokyo area. Takeo Endo hopes to lure more farmers into the business so they can cultivate strawberries and other products. I hope this will serve as a center for shipping and selling vegetables locally produced in Fukushima. If this succeeds, we can overcome food safety concerns and help farmers make more money so they can continue working in this business. It's one of many steps people in northeastern Japan are taking to try to revitalize the agricultural sector in their region. 
ナオミ・ウメモラン NHK ワールド福島。